So first of all, I want to um, ask you some questions. Who here is writing tests in Python? Wow, that's a lot. Nice. Um, who uses the unit test.py library coming with Python? Who does use PyTest? And hopefully you can keep your hands up now because who enjoys writing tests? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm using Python since 2011, doing testing first with unit test.py since 2013 and then got into PyTest in April um, 2015 when there was the Adopt PyTest month, where they organized something, a uh, thing where PyTest contributors teamed up with um, projects to introduce them into PyTest. And following that pattern, something magical will happen in 2017, but I don't know what yet. I'm also writing a, a browser in Python since about two years, which uses a lot of my free time. Um, if you're interested, the website is qbrowser.org, and it's a keyboard-focused browser. And of course, I also started taking testing seriously um, since I discovered, yeah, you can't do a project of this size cross-platform with different Python versions and different library versions, and soon different backends without going completely insane, except maybe with doing tests, but I think I'm still a little bit insane. So I got part of the core team of PyTest as well, contributed to various plugins, and I'm also giving PyTest trainings. Well, I gave one at EuroPython, and I'm uh, soon giving a second one for a company in Vienna. So why would you use PyTest? We have a very simple function here, right? It, it takes just a value, adds two to it, and returns the value. Now, a typical test with unit test of Pi would look like this. And, you know, this doesn't remind me of Python. It, it reminds me of a certain island and coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and the API is coming from Java, actually. So things shouldn't be this way in Python. And this is how the Pi test, test looks. A lot, a lot simpler, right? But if you know the assert statement, if you just would run this function with Python, this is the information you would get. And in this case, it's easy to figure out what went wrong. But in general, well, if you just have the information something failed, it's not a very useful test. Because at the end, it, uh, it's also a job of your test runner to make things easier and save time. If you run it with PyTest, this will happen. So you not just get what failed, but you also get this. Um, there's a laser pointer somewhere, I think. OK, I want to figure out how to use this. It mean? Ah, yeah, perfect. You don't only see this assertion failed, but you also see what the values were and how the how the calls were evaluated to produce these values. So usually, usually if you see PyTest output, it's very easy to see what went wrong in what way. And depending on what data types are involved in your assertion, you get an even nicer output. So here I have two examples, one with a list where it tells you um, at which index the comparison failed and with a string and uh, a not in uh, assertion, where it tells you, well, you said this shouldn't be in this string, but it was found at this position or with this context, which is, again, very useful information to, deb uh, to debug some issue. And now I want to show some other PyTest features. Um, it's worth saying, these are sometimes a little bit strange when you look at them the first time. So um, you will see what I mean in a second. But in the end, it's, it's a bit weird and it's doing some magic, but it works out really well. So if I think about these problems again now, I know PyTest and I, I didn't invent these solutions. I have to say, 
yeah, it's, it's weird, but I can't imagine a better way either. <laughs> so if you want uh, to run a test with various values, in unit test, with unit test.py, you would typically have your class and then different methods to have the test. But again, this is very verbose. Uh, in Python 3.4, it got a bit better with uh, self.subtest. But again, it's not really a solution I like personally. So what you do with PyTest is you have your test function and then you have a PyTest mark parameterized decorator where you just have a list of the values you want to run this test with and it then inserts those as arguments and runs your tests with those values. So one of these rather little bit weird concepts are fixtures. fixtures. It's also a really weird, weird, weird word to pronounce for me. <laughs> um, so you have a function here called some value, which is decorated as a PyTest fixture, and it returns 42. And then you have a, the test function under it, which has an argument called the same like the fixture, fixture. so an argument um, test uh, some value. So what PyTest will do when setting up your test, it will call this fixture, fixture for you and your test will receive it as an argument, which doesn't really make much sense with such a simple value, but it's a very nice way to share some setup states between tests. So here with unitest.py, uh, unit you would typically do some subclassing and it gets really weird if you have multiple objects you want to set up. And here, if you have another one, just do another fixture and add another argument and you're done. What you also can do is do cleanup after a test from such a uh, fixture. So for example, I have a DB fixture which connects to some da database, um, gets a cursor, then yields it. So that's what the test will get as an argument. Um, if you're not familiar with yield, it's usually used to write generators, but here in this case, it's just used to give PyTest a way to run the first half of the function and then after the test, run the other half. And what it does after the test is to roll back whatever happened and close the connection. So this is basically the equivalent to set up and tear down with unit test. There are some built-in fixtures. Um, the most useful of them are tempdeer and monkey patch. What tempdeer does is it just gives you a clean, empty, temporary directory for your test, which is quite useful if you write some kind of integration tests. And again, some of this just a little bit weird things is this. Um, the API for the temp here. It's basically something like pathlib in Python 3.4, but it exists since a lot longer time. It's a py.path. So you can use the division operator to join paths in instead of a OS path join. And then use a write method to simply open the file, write something to it and close it. And in the other sec uh, in the second test, we checked uh, this directory is empty, so it, PyTest did cl um, create another clean directory for us. Monkey patch is basically some lighter alternative to unitest mock patch, because uni uh, unitest mock definitely is the most weird API I've ever seen. And monkey patch is quite easy. You again have this fixture use it to set some environment variable or patch some attribute. Here in this example, just the uh, environment variable. And again, PyTest will take uh, care of cleaning things up after the test. And in the other, in the second test, foo won't be in the environment anymore. It's also a really nice topic, which 
doesn't really exist for unitest.py in some same way is plugins. And I want to show some plugins I use myself or just find quite useful. One of them is, is uh, PyTestCov, which uses coverage.py. So I'm wondering who also records coverage when testing? Okay, that's less people than I thought. So what coverage.py itself does, it, it um, measures what part of your code got executed. And then it can tell you, in this example, the continue here, so this else branch was never taken. So I'm probably missing a test for that. And PyTestCov simply integrates this in, into PyTest nicely. Then there is PyTest BDD. Um, BDD means behavior driven development, which basically means you have some human readable language called Gherkin. And, <laughs> and then you again have Python functions with decorators where you define the logic behind this test. And I personally didn't really like this way of writing tests, or still don't. I mainly prefer writing plain Python tests. But for writing end-to-end uh, -end tests, I find it quite useful. So for my browser, for example, I'd write, um, when I'm opening this and this page, and I'm pressing this and this key, this page should be loaded. And yeah, that's very straightforward. So you read the, the test, and you're, it's immediately clear immediately clear what it does. And if you have some contributor implementing a new feature, you can also tell them, yeah, can you please add a quick test for that? And they don't have to know testing or, or PyTest. It's very easy for them to add something. There is PyTest Sugar, which gives you a much nicer terminal output with nice check marks and the progress bar. There's, by the way, also PyTest Poo, where you can mark tests as Poo, and it gives you this Unicode Poo char for them. <laughs> but I don't have a screenshot of that. And there are a lot more plugins. So, for example, to make integration into frameworks or even other languages easier. So PyTest Qt, Django, Twisted. Then PyTest CPP to run your CPP tests as part of PyTest. Either if you just really like PyTest or you have some CPP part which somehow integrates with your Python part. And there is the plugin with some strange name OHESKit, which allows you to do the same with JavaScript tests. Um, there are also various other plugins. I wrote 180 here because that's what I found. Um, someone else told me it's over 200, but it yeah, definitely is a lot. So there's xtest X -dist to um, distribute tests over several hosts or CPU cores, which is quite nice if you have a lot of tests and your test suite is taking too long. There's catch lock, which integrates with the login module, or timeout, which um, starts a second thread for each test and then aborts it and times, uh, gives you a timeout error if something hangs. Which can also be nice if that somehow happens to you some, uh, sometimes. And you have some CI, like Travis CI, where otherwise you would just wait 40 minutes until Travis uh, stops the execution and you still won't get other test results. And if there isn't a plugin for something you want, it's really easy to write one. So in this example, we implement the PyTest adoption hook. So PyTest will call this when, um, when setting up things. And you can add a command line option, in this case backend. And then in the test, you can Again, use a fixture, a magical built-in fixture called request, which means, well, information about the test which requests um, it, basically. 
and you can get this argument and see what it was set to. Of course, it's just a small example. There are dozens of these hooks, and it's really easy to use them, in my opinion. Um, so for my project for the browser, I've wrote a little plugin which starts the browser in a sub-process and starts a web server, runs those end-to-end -end tests, and then checks if the right pages were, were requested from the web server, and also checks the logging outputs of the browser to see if no error messages were logged. So, if you think, well, this, this all sounds great and I want to start using it, there's a project called Unitest to PyTest, which helps with the mechanical part of rewriting your tests. But PyTest also runs your existing tests, or at least Unitest uni and Nose tests, which is pretty much all of them. Um, so it can also incrementally switch over or just use it as a more beautiful runner for your existing tests. There's also an, a handful of core developers uh, for PyTest, and we're planning to do a sprint to work on it. Um, the page just, la uh, well, there's a crowdfunding for, um, to at least get the travel uh, paid for the core developers. It just uh, went online a few hours ago. This is why the screenshot still shows uh, zero dollars. It was at 300 something when I checked. I hope it's a bit higher now. <laughs> um, so if you or your company uses PyTest, please encourage them to spend a little bit to get us all together, because it's definitely much easier to work on something if you meet in one place. There's also the website pytest.org. There's an IRC channel called PyLib for historical purposes, mainly. Um, on Freenode, you can reach me at me at the compiler.org. The slides are also online there. And finally, um, I and others are available for contract work on PyTest to fix some issues people re really don't want to fix in their free time. Um, or just funding or also trainings. Thank you. Okay, PyTest is awesome, so we should have a couple of questions. <laughs> In the front. Thank you. Um, I have two questions, actually. I don't know if there's time. Uh, so first one is very quick. Can you run this with uh, docs? Of course, yeah. Okay. And um, Tox is by the same developers, basically. Okay, also. So it, it uh, ties in very well. And at the sprint, we also will work at, uh, on Tox. There's even a funding option. Please work more on Tox and less, less on PyTest. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, definitely. Okay. Thanks. And my second question is, uh, for these uh, ad hoc uh, plugins that you might uh, want to create for one particular project, uh, do they live together with the project, or do you have to make a separate package for them? How does this work? Um, so here, see, um, you can just put plugin code in a conf test.py uh, in your project. So like in this example, and PyTest will load it from there. Um, maybe if people don't know what Tox is, because it's also a really nice project, it's basically a thing which um, creates virtual env for you, so uh, isolated Python environments, then installs libraries and runs your tests with any test runner. And it's quite nice to te um, test different Python versions or library versions. In terms of timing, what is the difference between unit test and pytest? test? You mean performance? Or? Yeah, the, the efficiency to run the tests. In I've terms of time. I've never measured it, but I wouldn't expect it to be a significant difference. So, 
when you define a fixture, can you use existing fixtures as parameters to the fixture you are defining? Yes, you can mostly nest fixtures like you want. Um, there's also scoping, so you can tell PyTest only set this up once instead of every test. And then there are some, um, some problems, like if you want to use a fixture, a pair test fixture in a global fixture, but other than that, you can. No more questions? OK, the last one. Uh, can you have so, uh, something like dependent tests? So if this test fails, it makes no sense at all to run the, the other tests? Hmm. <laughs> well, I've never done it, but, but looking at how the plugin API works and how, how uh, much you can do with it, the answer is probably yes. OK. All right, we're running out of time, but let's thank Florian again for the nice talk. Thank you.